Gentles on lady men. I'm Spiro, and I'm not a wizard. Sorry, it's been a while. Uh, I've been a little bit sidetracked on a few things recently, and uh, I thought I needed to get back to the C64. Um, I have, I did get in the last month, I got an Atari 130XE, or maybe a little bit over a month ago, <clears throat> and I finally managed to get a video cable for it so I could connect it, um, and found that half of the keys on the bottom row aren't working, which is a bit of an annoyance, given the price I paid. Um, but yeah, so I have not got back to my um, adventure game. Uh, I, I've just been completely scatterbrained this last month and it got worse a couple of weeks ago when I got COVID um, and my brain was even more scattered. So uh, I'm mostly past that now. Um, so I, I have I have spent over the last couple of weeks I was looking through um, <clears throat> the there was an announcement made by um, Ken Williams uh, of uh, Sierra fame uh, and they are re-releasing or re they're releasing a remake of um, of the the original adventure uh what was it called the cavern the, the the cavern adventure game that inspired them or inspired roberta williams to to create her own game uh and become sierra online <coughs> and uh last week i read ken's book like i have i've never really been much of a sierra follower like when i was 13 when i was at college which is what americans call high school um i i do remember on the pcs there um having king's quest 3 one of the space quests possibly at that stage one of the police quests and leisure suit larry um and leisure suit larry and uh, King's Quest were the ones that stuck in my head the most out of those uh, but I was terrible at them like King's Quest I was just completely rubbish at um, and, and it, it, it kind of made me realize that that my dream well, maybe dream is a bit overselling it but my my idea of wanting to make an adventure game, uh, went back, started playing a bunch of old adventure games, text-based, and the, you know, the minor graphical ones like the early Sierra games, and I'm horrible at them. I'm just, like, I think that the, I like the idea of them better than I liked the games themselves, or rather could cope with. Um, and, and And it's interesting, it's like the, trying to play um, Mystery House where there was a, a jug in the fridge that you that you get and, and now I'm in my 40s and I was I tried to get the jug and I couldn't and it was I had to I had to look online in a thesaurus to try and find alternate names for a jug or maybe more Americanized names for a jug and it turned out it's called a pitcher and I uh, just here in New Zealand I've never ever heard anyone refer to a jug as a pitcher um, I know I know what the word is and what it means but it's just not um, it's not something that we really use here in New Zealand so I wonder if a lot of why I didn't gel with those games or, or couldn't get through a lot of them was because um, we we have got uh, a different vocabulary and when some of these games are so very 
I don't really want to use the term pedantic. I mean, it seems pedantic, but it's just because they're restricted because they were small 8-bit machines. So they're not going to have, you know, 30 words for the same thing if they don't need to. They'll just use the most common word that they know. Um, and, yeah, that was... It was a, it was a little bit eye-opening, right? It was, but, the, I mean, there's a lot of other very... Um, some of the puzzles that a lot of these games have are very pedantic like you've got to do things very specifically often in a very specific order and again i guess a lot of that comes down to restrictions of the architecture um where they couldn't make really open world games but i know that there were like i i i was i was really into role-playing games when i was younger <clears throat> and i know a guy who was a a, a generation older than me maybe two generations, he was about 20 or so years older than me, and he was, you know, came from a computer science uh, university degree kind of background, very, you know, a lot more, a lot posher than I was, and he, I think, would have grown up with a lot of these types of adventure games, and when playing Dungeons and Dragons one time, he told me a story about it, I never, I never actually played any games with him um, but apparently he was running a game for some of his friends and was telling me about how they couldn't figure out his puzzles and were getting upset with him and stuff and he was going well you know they should have figured it out um, and was you know was annoyed that they were getting annoyed at him um, but but it just it seemed to be a very um of its time kind of puzzle design like I've always I, I, I call early D&D &D style games where it's Dungeon Master versus the players I call them Gygaxian games because that seems to be the style of game that early Gary Gygax style adventures seem to inspire in people um, it was, you know, uh, you know, it, it 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 wasn't a a working with the players thing. It was working against the players, um, and I kind of feel that that was a very similar way of designing early adventure games. Um, so. Anyway, that's my, my long ramble to explain why I'm really crap at them. Um, so, uh, when I started making my my uh, text adventure game for the C64 um, a, a couple of months ago, um, I, I, I think I might have mentioned that I wanted to sort of take it more of, um, or at least to consider taking it down a path of say old BBS games like Legend of the Red Dragon and uh, a few days ago I was digging through some code and I found a game that I had started writing this is going back to about 2013 as you can see by some of the dates on these files um, for bulletin boards and this was a post-apocalyptic game inspired by legend of the red dragon and and that style of gameplay um so the you know you'd have a town you could you could build your character up you could then go out fighting monsters um and if you survived you know you'd come back you'd you'd take their loot you'd buy things and and so i the game works it wasn't complete by any stretch um as i said that was it was written in pascal so <clears throat> i was going through the code and i was like oh i've actually done quite a lot that's the main file is the record structures i think i went a bit overkill like this was not really 
like I had I had a lot of like there's a lot of attributes here I had skills here um, and I think I, I hadn't settled on how I was going to use them in the game uh, but a lot of the a lot of the RPG mechanics of this were based on a pen and paper role-playing game I wrote many years ago um, and a cut down version of um but the it just i i i don't have a good approach at creating games i kind of start with the coding and then try and figure it out from there um rather than doing what roberta williams did and and writing out the design and then having the code written to build that out um and, and you know nothing has changed now um i do people tell people i'm I, I can code but i'm not a coder um so oh if we quit out we saw in the as as you saw in here there are a bunch of door files so this was this was what managed the users so that uh, on bulletin boards um, of old and the new Telnet based bulletin boards um, of which I do run one and I haven't logged into it in a couple of weeks um, <clears throat> I, I, I would do my testing with by creating um, oops, multiple files that were in the right format so they'd have a username um, and that's how the bulletin board knew to, um, uh, to you know to log you into into the same user so it was actually based on the username so as you can see I think most of the other data is the same so you know one of these things is the node this one's the speed this is the bulletin board software that was being used um this is the s probably the security level of the user this is probably their time left i, I can't remember this it's a documented format and this is a uh, so many years ago now anyway um <clears throat> so i i had this if i click how to play um there was a bunch of help screens so it would explain the the attributes um, it would explain the skills uh, it would explain how the combat worked um, and m monsters being their names being oh that's interesting green yellow wow that's odd feature um, monster names being a different color indicated how tough they would be for you to fight um, leveling up and good luck so just to show you quickly it should still work after a fresh sleep you're feeling better so I played it yesterday died <coughs> it does have the concept of uh, events because it's a bulletin board so it'll tell you if if I was playing this on a bulletin board and there were other users it would have events such as you know other players who um who either died or who achieved certain things or whatever right um there there was also multiplayer combat so you could fight other players um so this this was the main screen so you could enter the wastelands to go into the combat some of these worked some didn't so dave's sanctum santorum um oh, dave's not here at the moment um you could list other players and you could view your stats so this is very standard for um these sort of bulletin board style games Oh, I've got full hit points again. Um, job board, did I have that? There's no job board listings. 
it's actually interesting to to go through so if i go to weapons and armor so i can look at the weapons for sale uh i don't have enough money oh and, and in this game i've got um so you can press q to go out of hopefully most menus so if i go armor for sale i don't want any of them i should have made an option to say none but um you press q and it'll take you back um you can chat to the guy in the store blah blah so return to town uh, the bar you can listen to rumors um, some of them will be useful some of them won't be hire some comfort services I'm probably sure you can probably guess what those are um, so if we enter the wastelands um, you've left the safety of the town dangerous and hideous creatures roam the wastelands they won't hesitate to kill you and take whatever you may be carrying stay alert and stay alive Killing evil mutants, scarred and twisted by centuries of radioactive evolution, is what you are here for. Kill them all, and take their loot. Um, so the the prompt down here will tell you. So because it's a BBS game, there are limited turns per day that a player can make. So if you die, you're out of turns, uh, or you won't be able to play again f that day, uh, or if you reach your maximum turn. Um, count that will also end the day for you so as you saw we did a bunch of things in town um, they didn't count towards they didn't use up any of your turns there are some things that will like if you stay and heal yourself um, some of those things will anyway HP your hit points XP is your experience points stim packs is because this is set in a sci-fi universe they are basically your your healing potions of this game and i got 914 credits <coughs> so again you can view your stats here um, there is this idea of a bank um, which there is a secret key i think did i yeah so there's it's not listed here but i'm pretty sure if i press b for bank yep you throw your money in the air a giant bird swoops down catches the money in its bill and flies away with it so this was like a a secret shortcut so that you could put your money in the bank without going back into town um and now see you can see i've got credit zero and if i view my stats the money is all in the bank anyway so i'll press l to go look for trouble i'm attacked by a robber now the color of the name is white so i think that that is a standard um i think that's about at my level if i remember rightly um so you notice here there's there's a in brackets here so that'll that'll mean that attack is the default so if i press enter it will attack him so i swing my bowie knife wildly robber misses me attack again we seem to be missing each other. Oh, here we go. <coughs> I hit the robber for 6 HP. Oh, the robber hits me. He whips me. Whip me good. Oh, he pounded me for 9 points. Damn it. He stomped me. Holy moly. I'm doing some damage to him, but now he seems to be doing more damage to me. I need a better weapon, but too expensive so I keep attacking I can if I press question mark show you the menu again so if I had a stim pack I could press U to use it and that would heal me um, or I can press R to run away I th think if I run away there's a chance that they will stab me in the back as I go away so I might still take damage killed it okay so I own 106 XP and 168 credits. So there we go. So if I return to town now, just that's given you uh, a rundown of how the game is and was and is supposed to be. So I started 
writing it for the C64. <coughs> and I have not done a huge amount. As you can see, I've basically done the intro screens. Um, and I think I'm going to convert the whole game to be lowercase. Um, if I run it, um, that is my awesome, awesome Petsky art. Okay, so I've, I, welcome traveller to the remains of a world ravaged by nuclear war. I think in this day and age I should probably make it that the world has been ravaged by a global pandemic, but this is a fiction, it's fantasy. In the century since, survivors found a way to eke out an existence. But even in this harsh realm, adventure, adventure presents itself. Friends and neighbours gladly pay for someone to keep them safe from the savage marauding mutants, the horrors of the wastes, and the sad fate that has befallen the human race are an opportunity for the brave and the daring to win fame and fortune, or to die horribly in an uncaring world. Uh, so, this effectively becomes the beginning screen, so I can go how to play here. Um, so, th I went back to uh, uppercase standard here so this is this is making me think i should probably go to lowercase across the game um uh, so you are a lone wanderer traveling through barren wastes fighting mutants and protecting the innocent and the helpless or not money's a good reason to at any time press question mark for help or to redisplay the full menu the default option on a prompt is a, oh, missing a space is a grey letter inside brackets like that so as you could see it was the same as here uh, pressing return will select that option selecting Q on any menu will quit and take you to the previous screen and that's all I got <laughs> so As I said, if I go to my Pascal code here, which is terrible, um, the there were a few things in here uh, blah blah blah, so this is all the character, oh, so this is the character creation will be most likely the next step of what did I get? Uh, into the wastelands that doesn't work load game right so I also wanted you to be able to save the game onto um, onto disk and and the, the more the more uh, sort of going back to the whole reading the Sierra the book by Ken Williams and looking at v various adventure game things over the last few weeks has made me think maybe I want to create this in a way that I'm building an engine rather than just the game uh, and which will mean that all my data will be stored in most likely be stored in separate files um, the so the way Sierra the way Ken Williams did it for Sierra at the start was that he he uh, and and their games came out um, <coughs> excuse me just got a bit of a cold a cough from this cold slash COVID thing um the way the way Ken Williams did it was that, um, uh, and and the first games that they released were designed for the Apple II. Um, I'm trying to think of the language that he that he used at the beginning. It might have. I don't think it was Fortran because I think he was trying to build a Fortran compiler.
or maybe it was Fort Train. Interesting. I don't know. Um, I did see some of the original source code, and it wasn't basic or machine code. Anyway, sidetrack. Um, so what he had done was he built what they called the AGI, which was their game engine, um, the first game engine they did, and that allowed um, Roberta to create files which had the data in them uh, and it was in a certain format that the engine would then read and display to the users um, so I'm going to try and look a bit more into that before I proceed much more with this um, if you if you remember back to my very first video perhaps um, I had I think it was this book here adventure writers handbook and this started off creating a an adventure so it had the gold fever if you remember that on my first video I, I wrote that gold fever listing out uh, I didn't do the enchanted castle um, and then I didn't I didn't go forward and I maybe I should um, I because I kind of got sidetracked and wanted to kind of recreate it in assembly language but I think that maybe I should focus on doing this and doing it in basic first and not being scatterbrained or being less scatterbrained and learning you know the d doing things in the right order right so learning how to create the games and create something that works and basic and then try and port that to assembly language rather than trying to port something half-assed and and um what you call you know learning on machine language as I'm going which is going to make it a bit tougher anyway so the they they wrote an interpreter here so there's an adventure interpreter so the idea here was that they created an adventure game but then uh, and, and it wasn't a, a, a complete game it was just a you know a few rooms just to show you how it's done and this I think was should have been a lot more important to me um, so I think I want to go back and do those chapters uh, and then use those hopefully for inspiration uh, for how I'm going to build this even though this isn't going to be the same type of game um, th what I learn from that there should be something um that i can take across um okay so let me just go back into here this is the pascal um again I, so i think because the the game is so at the moment has so many st stats and skills and levels i'm going to have to try and cull it down to just what's important and like I was trying to be too clever at the time um, to try and have a game that stood out a little bit more but I think I got to the point that a, a lot of the stuff was just not being used um, and so there's a few things here like uh, SE so these are special events so when you're out in in the wastelands there's a when you when you look for trouble there's a percent chance that it'll trigger a special event and these are you found a cave and then it goes you again this is probably not great code you know it shows you some text it gives you some menus it, it rolls a 
uh, you know, I've got a die roll here so that I can um, randomly generate some results. Um, so on a, you know, and this is me going back to role playing games as you know, it's a random number generator, but I'm treating it as if I was playing an RPG. I roll a d6, and here's a random number from one to six. On a one to two, it produces this. On a three, it produces that. On a four or a five, it's this. On a six, it's this. Um, <coughs> uh, there's an old man event. Um, the that one's a bit simpler. Oh no, yeah, there's oh yeah, it goes into again. So this is you know once you get into this event, it it ends up running through very very in a very linear way, you know. Um, found an oasis so there's so there's special events in here as well as your normal combat um, some of them might give you better weapons or armor uh, or a fistful of credits are these here these uh, pipe these are called pipe codes on the bulletin boards they're used for changing colors um, being displayed to the user uh, and so as part of this game I use the same kind of pipe codes um, I, I you know wrote my own impl implementation of them um, partly because I had the idea that if this grew I would have the files external to the code like the data external to the code um, and you know, uh, doing that would allow me to, you know, change languages, do all sorts of things. Um, there are minor events. Um, oh, shit. I don't like the way Visual Studio Code just freaking... If you go page down, it'll go page down from where... You last clicked on the cursor, not from where you are on the screen now. Um, so these are some of the other things in town, right? So the the local job board that we shot that we saw, um, the workshop. Obviously, this, as you can see by it being a short procedure, doesn't really do anything. Um, well, this one is, does a bit more. Um, Oscar's weapon store, so you can buy weapons, sell items. Uh, again, it's all very linear. Um, <coughs> so, yeah. Or bank. So, I'd, I'd like to do this in a way where I don't have to do such linear coding because if I did this on the C64 that would just be a massive waste of memory um, and disk space. So I definitely have to find a better way. Um, and yeah, I'm not... Um, So that's where I'm at at the moment. Um, that is my current project um, for this week. Please leave your thoughts, your comments, um, ideas. Uh, as I said, I'm going to uh, work my way through this. I did get sidetracked on one other thing as part of this, which was I fired up. A program called Sid Wizard to create a, a, like a intro theme tune and I made this little short one um, and 
I followed along a uh, a tutorial on YouTube, uh, but th the format it saved it in I think was a, a Sid Wizard specific one, um, and uh, the Sid Wizard the latest version comes with like a Linux command line tool to convert it from the SID wizard format to a SID file um, but then I've got to figure out how to load a SID and play it in basic uh, which I I don't know how to do any ideas I would really welcome uh, but for a short tune maybe it might be overkill to load a whole tune maybe I need to figure out a way of just doing a couple of blink 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 noises as the intro tune um, and and you know just do it manually via a few pokes um, I'll see how that goes um, that's where I'm at thanks for watching sorry it's been so long since I made a video um, and thank you for all the comments that I've got um, I've got some wonderful comments um, with a whole bunch of pseudocode to help out with a couple of my other videos um, from a guy called Jeremy Nasmith, so thank you for that. Um, I think I remembered your name correctly. Um, and, yeah. I don't know how to end this video, so I'm just going to end this video. Thanks for watching. Um, ideas, comments in the doodly thingy below, and um, we'll talk to you soon. See you.